Hi guys, so let's now take a look at the reverse J curve. So when it comes to the uh, reverse J curve, this is where we have the exact opposite scenario playing through. So it's not a depreciation now, it's an appreciation of the currency. So when an appreciation of the currency leads to an initial increase in the trade balance before deteriorating. Okay, so it has much the same sort of implications, but in this case we are uh, moving from a position of trade surplus to an improvement and then a consequent worsening or deterioration of the trade balance. Now, as such, this is particularly relevant for net exporters, i.e. countries that generate far more in export value and volumes, perhaps, than they do when it comes to actual import values. Um, so they export far more than they actually import, and as such, they run big trade surpluses. So the most not notable examples, of course, right now, uh, it's China, uh, of course, and Germany. Both countries are often cited as examples of countries that have undervalued currencies. So Germany, it's argued, has an undervalued currency because the euro is weakened by certain other euro member countries, the likes of uh, Portugal, Italy, uh, that have been bringing down the sort of value, Greece as well, of course, uh, that have been bringing down the sort of value of uh, the euro and lead to a sort of uh, a, a cooling effect because otherwise how else would Germany be able to run a current account surplus of 10% of GDP but otherwise what would normally happen is of course that the demand for their currency would increase and their currency would appreciate and then we would see a deterioration come through okay meanwhile we've also got China well China imposes capital controls some people do argue that actually eliminating those capital controls to allow demand and supply conditions to actually determine the currency could actually lead to an appreciation of the currency and that obviously would reduce their export competitiveness um, and consequently they're likely to import more certainly as domestic consumers then have a greater real purchasing power because they would be able to f afford uh, more easily uh, foreign manufactured goods okay so the likes of uh, mulberry handbags and so on and perhaps uh, yeah there would be more imports entering the Chinese economy as, as uh, a direct result of that increased purchasing power okay so particular relevance to those uh, net exporting countries with trade surpluses okay so we can see that at point A a appreciation of the currency is actually carried out so with an appreciation of course the currency value goes up and what plays through is that uh, phenomenon of course spiced strong pound imports cheap exports dear okay so exports become dearer imports become cheaper okay now again this is going to occur due to differences in the short run and long run elasticities as we've seen with our j curve so we can see at point a through to Point B, there is that improvement, that initial short run improvement in the actual trade balance, okay? So why would this happen? Well, initially people might not understand the actual price implications. Uh, they might not actually have uh, been able to find a cheaper supplier in the short term. Moreover, there might be, might have been export contracts which have already been uh, discussed, negotiated and signed, and thus there must be the actual delivery of uh, those export contracts which must come through. Uh, so as such, there could be that uh, big increase in the actual trade position before, of course, leading to this, uh, this deterioration. And it's not to say that this would necessarily lead to a deficit in given countries, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we can see that certainly the trade balance does worsen. And why is this? Well, it comes back to the fact that contracts will expire there will be cheaper imported input uh, inputs available as well. Uh, so these imports that have become cheaper, imports cheaper, remember, may mean 
that uh, those domestically based firms in China and Germany then actually start thinking, oh, well, we could buy this good from uh, Brazil or uh, perhaps Thailand or somewhere else, okay? Uh, and therefore, they might be able to get those goods at a cheaper price than a Chinese uh, producer might be able to offer them right now. Uh, so, in the long run, the elasticities in essence become uh, far, far more price elastic, okay? Uh, in the short run, we see the inelasticities of demand and as uh, a direct consequence of these uh, contracts, uh, which then later expire, there is more price sensitivity with regards to exports and imports values. Great stuff, guys. See you next time.